Welcome back, uh, viewers, to the first winter edition of Heads Up. We have reached that season where it's normally wet and rainy. And, Neil, we've had a bit of that weather looking out the window over the last few days. Uh, you're nice and dry up there in Papamoa. Uh, Thanks, guys. Hmm? How was your week? Well, the week was um, average, I'd say. Below average, actually. Sort of biding my time, and like all of us, until the New Zealand racing kicks off. And ah, good news this week. Then the 20th, Pukekohe kicks off. Good track, good stadium. Looking forward to that. We did signal that was a likelihood uh, last week on the show. If you want all the breaking news, we have it here on the Heads Up podcast. It's where you get your news these uh, these days without such uh, mediums as radio, trackside, etc., newspapers. So, uh, no, that's positive, isn't it? And the country's mm. going to go to level one on Wednesday. Is that yeah. the mail you've been getting to? Wow. Don't be all hell to break loose. I'll go and I'll go and protest I'm with thousands really? and others, and we'll, we'll stuff things up. Anyway, no, it's great. But um, one one media book of COVID, and I, I can't forget. I'm back on the bandwagon. What bandwagon is that? Warriors bandwagon. Eh? Right, <laughs> <laughs> You're not really, are you? No, shit. No. That was an aberration, folks. We're going to go straight to the sports tip. I'm not mucking around. The Warriors, the Warriors will get thrashed this week by the Panthers. Just climb aboard the 13 and over. Penrith 13 and over. They'll be absolutely hurting after not winning that game last week against the Knights when they should have just cleaned them up. They're going to come out firing. The Warriors, they had a good win last week, but they should have won by a lot more. I'm predicting... Penrith, 13 and over at 275 is the GOAT sports bet of the week. Are you going to disagree or are you going to uh, get off that bandwagon and see a bit of reality uh, again? I'm not sure if Max would, would agree with you there, but... Um, yeah, you've got sorry, a Max. Faith in you, so. <laughs> yeah, I'll that was... That, that hurt. Well, the Warriors should have won by 40 points and they would have covered that and then Penrith could have bloody done what uh, they should have done and that multi would have been good yeah, but really coulda woulda shoulda max sorry about that hopefully you're in the draw this week and we might pull your name out again you never know your luck you never know your luck yeah no it's um and also the foxton trials oh it was, it was like going to the races watching those foxton trials yesterday uh, 14 or 15 heats i've gone through the first half dozen and um i picked up a couple of sneaky ones there that i'll put in the review for subscribers sitting next week um, it's one of the, in the second heat, but, um, Matt Dixon trains it. Uh, it's a first starter, and one it's trial, I forget the name of it, but uh, you'll see it there. On the trial. Looked really good, handled the heavy track well, and uh, make sure you paste that in him in your black book. And just talking about black book, because I was going to mention him in some of my brick bats, but TAB um, black booking system is just ridiculous. You know? When you get emailed the <clears throat> The, your black bookers, they are on the day of the race is mid-morning. Who, who does the form mid-morning the day of the race? Now, you want to know your horses that you've got to study a bit deeper one or two days before. RaceNet is an excellent black booking system. Put comments in there, edit those comments. They can email you. You can go on there, see your upcoming black bookers. They want a good black booking system. And like we've, even with the greyhounds, that's just frustrating. I, I've emailed them before before pre-COVID and said, can we have these black bookers the day before at least, or the night before at least? But um, we'll try, we'll try. It's an Who did you email? Oh, it's the help desk at um, CAB, pre-COVID. Uh, no, I don't think those people got a job anymore. Maybe try again. Email, go to the top. Seriously, go to the top. Go to Seville. See if you get a response from Mr. Glenn Seville. Go on. Okay. Email him that. Ask him. He, paid, he, he authorised 50 million for this website and 17 million a year. You're one of his good customers. It's a genuine, uh, legitimate request. See what sort of feedback you get, mate, and report back to us because I'll be very interested to see what comes about. Well, it's something free, isn't it? It's not going to cost anything to do. All they've got to do is change their settings. Correct. The email to go out the day before. It's well, the old website. The old website, you could choose whether you got it emailed or text and ha how long before you got, it, uh, like morning of the race, day before from memory. Uh, yeah. So mm -hmm. it's only catching up to that old website. 50 million, you'd think you'd get uh, improvements, but hey, not in all aspects of it, that's for sure. 
You going to do that? I'm serious. Oh, definitely, I'll do it. Yeah, but I was going to say something else, but I'll, I'll link that until the next. <laughs> yes. Uh, uh, Strad break tomorrow. Yeah, really good race. Yes, um, as I put a post up this morning, part of in the Melbourne Cup to pick, and someone emailed me and said the quaddy at um, Eagle Farm was even harder than Lotto to pick. So you might spend a grand on Lotto rather than the quaddy on, on Saturday. I see that well with drivers. Okay, another fat bike, good race, big field, a lot of good form, informed horses. And another race you go silly on, but what are you keen on? Well, I've found it too hard, to be honest, Neil. I thought we'd lay Dawn Passage from that draw. Oh, definitely, yeah. Yeah, that would be a lay for me. And trekking, um, too much weight. Trekking, too much weight, yeah, giving basically, Kim and Tari is always a lay in my book, so there's three that can't win. You're probably going to tip out the last start winner that we did suggest might be a hope a couple of weeks ago. Victorum, you like that? Even though the change of jockey, but I think that was uh, already, Duplessis had already taken the mount on Outback Barbie before Victorum won last start. So it shouldn't be too much of a concern. But what do you reckon, Victorum? Yeah, it was a horse I've always liked. And he, he um, yeah, had a fresh up run. Then he bucked, didn't he? Then he went to the trials. The trial looked really good. Then he won really well last start, powering home, betting some of these. Nicanova was a nice run, but you think he just dropped into 52 and a half kgs. He's drawn a nice spot to land midfield, do nothing. And if he gets the gaps, you know he's going to be finishing hard. Yeah, and at 8 and 280 on the KB, he, he's, um, he just seems an obvious one to me, you know. But, um, I've had. You know, on deep image lately, but you know, it's drawn wide. You've got drawn passage. High tail, I suppose, is drawn down, lightweight. Exhilarates, had a chance last start. But uh, like Victorum, I, I really like horses third up, and Victorum and Exhilarates have to be chances. That alone. So, uh, no, so you're on the fence, eh? Yeah, I'm, I'm just going to be uh, watching tomorrow. Just, just taking it easy. Just saving my powder for some of these... Uh, New Zealand race is coming up, but no, I'll I'll just watch with interest that race. Uh, I know we haven't talked about it, but we'll I'll throw a curveball at you. The JJ Atkins race seven, uh, the way Rothfire won last start it would have to be hard to beat. Looks pretty smart, two year old. Drawn wide again, and there's going to be a bit of pressure underneath. The last time he jumped really well, led and then dictated, and was just too fast home. So this is a different cup of tea. I'll tell you what. It's Kiwi horse, not an option. Uh, Want to trial really well. Um, up to 1,400 metres is ideal. Drawn to get a nice sitting behind. He's been unlucky a few times. And I think um, he was no good this way around in our country. But over there, he, he seems to have come right. And this could be his race. So I'd say, yeah, I'd go with not an option each way. So 9.50 and confidence. 3.10. Yeah, it's been backed in 15s into 9.50. Yeah. So, no, that'll be a good race as well. And, yeah, good luck in the uh, Quaddy Syndicate to try and snag that one. Uh, you'll be doing well. Yeah, well, look, I'll be looking at Flemington definitely, having a go there. Um, we got a little bit back on Wednesday. We spent just on 1000 and got our money getting the picks of the Quaddy there. And um, what you need is just that bit of luck where you get those two double-figure horses in and you're going to get that, you know, Five ten thousand dollar quaddy and they're a good spot to it. Also, I mentioned I may have a go at the team having pick six on Saturday, it's getting up to sort of twenty five thirty thousand dollars. Only if I think it can be struck by one ten percent ticket, we'll have a go. Um, I think with the strategy, you know, the Eagle Farm quaddy and the Flemington quaddy, it'll be hard to get. We'll have a crack. Anyway, I'll have a look at the day day's racing as we go along, just to see how the patterns are going. So. Okay. The uh, the quiz question last week, Neil, what was the big harness event that wasn't on last weekend that should have been on last weekend? Pretty easy question. The answer, of course, the harness jewels. Too easy. And we had nine people with the correct answer, I believe. Yep. Give me a number between one and nine. All right. Oh, gee, I, I kind of hope I don't draw out max because uh, then it will look like a fix. Uh, I'll go number eight. You want that? <laughs> ENS. ENS. Yeah. Now, long time subscriber. Good. Fella, good punter, enjoys his racing. So ENS, we'll get that multi on for you. Um, teacher, we chuck in Penrith 13 plus. 
uh, up to you. You, you. you decide what you want well, to you do. You said it's the bit of the weekend, so I'm going to chuck it in. So that's be, yeah. be one of them. All right. Let's make it an easy question for this week. Uh, we touched on the Stradbroke earlier. Yep. We want to know the name of the legendary Kiwi racehorse that won the Stradbroke handicap three times. And the third uh, win would have to go down as one of the greatest performances in the history of the turf, almost, Neil, I'd suggest. It was one of the best races. Well, I'd say that the best race I've ever seen from a horse that just wanted to win. You could see his head ducking and diving, looking for the gaps. And I think Jimmy Cassidy even said in his book that um, interviews that the horse just looked for the gaps. I was just there as a passenger, wasn't, wasn't it? Well, you've given enough clues away now. <laughs> yeah, but no, uh, I'm sure everyone everyone will know that one. Uh, what a great horse he was. So email or text your answers through to Neil by what, Tuesday? Yeah, Tuesday night, 027 352 or formpro at formpro.co.nz. Yeah, by Tuesday night, and um, you'll be in that draw for that multi. And we you to strike one, so you're going to get one soon, so be in. Fair enough. Uh, brick bats and bouquets, and we'll keep them away from the political sphere, Neil. We're Good. not going to delve down that little rabbit hole, one of your little passions at the moment, but we won't touch on that, shall we? Uh, <clears throat> no. I've got a bit of a breaking story. Break away. Mm. I wouldn't be surprised if uh, there's a slight change of heart from the powers that be at Rita around betting terminals on course for major uh, meetings. And we're talking things like Wellington Cup, uh, Christchurch Cup Week, Auckland Cup Derby, and Livermore Day. So that would probably be the first of the major thoroughbred meetings. New Zealand Trotting Cup obviously be another one. So that could be a positive, I believe, Neil. And uh, for those big days where you're doing in excess six, seven, eight hundred thousand plus on course turnover. A lot of people are there who bet on those days might not have phone accounts. So uh yeah. I think that's a good move. And that might see the continuation of the very popular Bay Ford New Zealand Punter of the Year competition at Hawke's Bay. You never know your luck. Yeah, that's good to hear. There's um a Hawke's Bay racing on the same date, so they're gonna be No, their dates are all two weeks later. So the first day <laughs> Uh, it's two weeks later than normal. Hold on, I'll bring up a calendar and I'll tell well, you. Funny, that, that's good to hear because the first meeting's always raced on a nearly always a softer, heavy track. Um, so an extra two weeks could just get those into the bed areas. That's good to hear. So, so 15th of September, 5th of. Oh, wait on. Get my months right here, sorry. Uh, 19th of September, 3rd. No. Start again. 12th of September, 3rd of uh, October, 17th of October. So basically two weeks later than normal. So the punter of the year would be on the 17th of October. What's the Uh, first meeting date? The 12th of September. Because the election, I thought, was on the 16th of September. No, the election's on the 19th. 19th, That's okay. So it's the following Saturday. Yeah, Yeah, that would be, I think, I'm not sure he raced it. Maybe our Puni still raced that day. Yeah. Uh, oh, that's great. Uh, but, um, with the fine weather we've had, and hopefully it be a reasonable winter. Um, and have decent tracks and, and top horses racing there. It'd be interesting to see, because a lot of horses, like for the Derby in Queensland, a lot of Kiwi horses would have been there for that, obviously. A low average field because of that reason. Um, how many of those horses will be going to Hastings? A lot of those horses will come. They want to get ready for the spring campaign and Melbourne. Well, yeah, it depends what the Melbourne uh, calendar looks like. Obviously, they I don't think they've confirmed. Right. Isn't there a talk that the uh, Caulfield Cup will be run after the Melbourne Cup? No, I can't see the sense in that, but yeah, well, they have their reason. Yeah, obviously, it shows the power that the AFL has in the state of Victoria. If the AFL finals are on, they don't want to clash. The racing doesn't want to clash with that. So. Um, mm. So interesting, but yeah, that would be a interesting change to a would, yeah. 160 year tradition, basically. Would be, I mean, it's just a one-off thing or a permanent thing. 
Well, you'd assume yeah, on one, post, maybe, yeah. you'd assume one off, but hey, you never know, do you? That's right. If it worked out well, avoiding the AFL. Well, they avoid the AFL normally. Obviously, the AFL has been pushed back due to uh, COVID as well. So, of course, yeah, oh, yeah. yeah. Yep. Um, but yeah, no, interesting times. Certainly, uh, there'll be a lot of trivia questions around things that happened or didn't happen in 2020 to try and catch people out in in years to come. Mm. Yeah, too right. Okay, um, right. Black books, black book, uh, book bats and bouquets. Yeah, well, I sort of touched on mine, I guess, with the yeah. um, with the TAB, maybe uh, looking at having betting terminals on those bigger days. Well, it gives people with punters on course more options, you know. People, are, I like using those on course because, you know, if you find out, I like finding a lucky... Uh, Tote lady. Operator, yeah. Guy, <laughs> what a kid. Have a win and you tend to sort of go back to them, don't you? And uh, have a good day. Sort of share the profits a wee bit, so... No, I enjoyed doing that, and um, so, and uh, if it wasn't there, it just yeah, it would lessen the turnover. I'm sure you could use your phones and the terminals, but I hate using those terminals. I'm just using the phone. But. Yeah, those terminals are going to be interesting. Come busy days when someone doesn't really know what they're doing, and the queues yeah. banking up behind them. Yeah, uh, it could be interesting. Bring back the on course bookie. They can cash. Wow. They can the cash. pub. What about the pub bookie? <laughs> <laughs> we can't be seen to be promoting illegal means here, but yeah, oh, hey. Great atmosphere. It's always a great atmosphere. Absolutely. Good old days. Used to enjoy that. Radio. Um, oh, trackside. I meant to mention trackside. Sort of a brick bat and a bow gate combined, really. And the trots last night, they were interviewing one or two trainers and giving those comments out pre-race. And that's great. Okay. But um, you'd think with a state of information, why couldn't they do that with nearly all the trainers? Just work out every race, the first five or six favourites, just give them the buzz. Record the comment, play it over two or three minutes before the race. Because um, there was a horse last night in Edinburgh in the last race. The trainer said he didn't give them a workout and the horse looked a bit fat and he burnt to lead and he just didn't fight on like he should have done if he was right. So he's a definite improver. But that's information that was good for punters to know that I'm sure was, he could be one run short here, and he did look to be. So, um, information drives turnover. Well, it costs, costs nothing. Absolutely. Uh, and on that note, I'll be doing more phone calls too for um, galloping trainers when galloping starts up again. I'll give a bouquet out to our friends at Boys Get Paid running a little competition this week a $100 buy in. Uh, Hundred people, ten thousand dollar prize pool, and uh, the prizes we paid out in an, in its entirety to uh, the competitors who run first, second, and third. So, good way to uh, get people interested and test the system before it gets a bit bigger come the spring. So, um, yeah, good way That's to right. put yeah, in a hundred, right. and you could walk away with seven grand. Yeah, Someone, no, someone's good. going to. That's right. I think it's a, a good, simple concept. Um, obviously, Luke will review it and the team will review it afterwards and see if they can improve it. But gee, you've got to be quick to get in there. I oh, had a look, and about an hour later, I went back to log in to enter it, but it was all taken up. So, obviously, a really popular, simple concept. And um, no, why isn't the TAB doing it? I don't know. No money in it for them, mate. Um, right, nothing else. Looking forward to oh, that's right. The um, June the 20th. It seems like we can all go back to the races on the June the 20th. Looking forward to that. Yeah. Terrific. Yeah, it'll, it'll feel like, feel like uh, it's been a while. We've been lucky enough to be able to get along to the dogs here in Whanganui a few times. So. What's it been like there? Oh, it's good fun, mate. Um, I wouldn't say the crowds are huge, but uh, good to be back on course and uh, enjoying a couple of quiet ales and telling a few yarns. So, gee, I'll, I'll, tell, I'll tell you a story, Neil. No one's listening, so we're right. No one's listening. This is back in the day. I don't know how many years ago this was. This might be five or six years ago. A certain Central District's Greyhound trainer who does win more than their fair share of races uh, had a bet on one of their dogs. And the TAB took the bet. 
$55,000 on a dollar 80 shot at the dogs. Closed pain a dollar five. Yeah. Turned its head right on the line and got beat a nose. Yeah. That's a true. That trainer. is a. What's that? Probably looking at the trainer. That is a Can true. Tonight, then? Oh. That, that is a true story. That is. Oh. I've had that verified. Now there's that's some. Uh, that's a good story. Yeah. That is a good story. Yes. Uh, so, no. Uh, yeah. Well, there's always plenty of people to yarn with it at the uh, Greyhounds. That's for sure. Yeah. Now there's lots of good punting stories, and if anybody's got any good punting stories and want to email us the story, just email it in, and we'll share it on on heads up. Um, That'd be great. Rightio. So, uh, a good weekend of racing coming up. Obviously, nothing here. We've got no cargo trots tomorrow. No Cambridge on Sunday. Then next, 6th, 13th. So, two weeks away, aren't we? Two, two, two weeks, weeks, one day away from Pukakaui kicking off. Super Rugby Aotearoa starts next week, Neil. So, all things been equal. If your very good friend Jacinda makes the right call, we'll be able to get along to uh, the games Live in the stadiums, how good will that be? It'll be great. No, no, she'll she'll be she'll do she'll do the right thing. And uh, you've got a hotline straight through to her, haven't you? Uh, sort of, yeah. <laughs> in a roundabout sort of way. Yeah. Anyway, enough of that gossip. <laughs> but uh, okay, well, have a good weekend. Make plenty of money, yeah. and we'll catch you all next week.